All right, guys, welcome back. Today we're going to continue looking at some rotational dynamics. Uh, in particular, we're going to try to better understand why a ridge hand is so devastating, not just at a distance, but even at close range. You can still generate a great deal of power with this particular strike. Perhaps you've experienced it yourself. Well, today we're going to look at the physics behind this and, and try to understand what's going on. Uh, and this might seem somewhat some of what we uncover might seem a little bit contradictory to some of our previous lessons. So we're going to try to better understand what's going on with regards to that as well. And I'll show you what I'm talking about to get you started. If we look at a rod, okay, so we can imagine in this case that our, our arm is like a rod that's swinging around a pivot. So if we look at a rod that has a, a axis of rotation at one end, and now it's sweeping out a circular path, what you should notice is that this end is going to sweep out a larger distance in the same amount of time as, say, this point will. And what that means is this end is going faster. But in this particular case, with a solid uniform rod, uh, this end could actually do more damage than this end. Well, doesn't that contradict what we said in our video on maximizing speed? Well, let's get into the lesson, let's see what's going on, and then we'll come back and we'll try to answer this for you and, and uh, see if we can reconcile uh, what's happening there. So, first thing we need to remind you of, very important with all of our rotational dynamics, and that's torque. And torque is a result of both a distance and a force that we're multiplying together. Now this distance is the distance from the axis of rotation. And we discovered in our introduction to some of the rotational dynamics that if we increase this distance, we maximize torque. And it a net torque is required to produce an angular acceleration. You need a net torque. Much like you need a net force to produce linear motion, you need a net torque to produce circular motion. So let's head over to our door because we're going to look at what we were uh, discussing last time. We're going to look at the illustration that we shared with you last time and we're going to reverse it today because uh, what we looked at was that if I apply a force at one distance we get an angular acceleration as a result of the torque. If I increase the distance I keep the force the same, what happens? The torque increases and so does the angular acceleration. Well I said we're going to reverse this. What do I mean? Not only is a net torque required to bring an object into motion, it's also required when you're dealing with rotational motion to bring an object to rest. So, um, I have Zach here and he's going to step out and we're going to see what happens. And it should be very much the same, just in reverse. If this is in motion, for instance, and he puts his hand up and I swing this door at him and he brings it to rest, well it should be easier, we're going to ask Zach in a second, should be easier than if he puts his hand up again and now he's going to stop the door a little closer uh, towards the center. You can see that door kept going a little ways, it was more difficult, correct? Now what you do want to keep in mind, the closer you get to the pivot, uh, the more uh, it's going to result in a push. So there's a balance here. But that should give us a, a good insight into what's going on. Uh, with regards to our ridge hand strike. I want to demonstrate on Zach for a second. If I use a ridge hand, I'm just going to go across his chest. If I impact with the edge of my hand, we get this. If instead I hit more with my whole arm and try to contact specifically with my forearm, you see we get a much larger impact force. Now you might say, well that results in more of a push and the ridge hand is more effective. Well there's some other physical concepts you need to consider. Is a ridge hand more effective? It can be. Now we have a smaller surface area, larger pressure. Okay, we looked at that in a previous lesson. We can also strike with a denser surface depending uh, if I strike with the inner forearm. Now we have a larger surface area and, and perhaps less density. Um, more muscle mass surrounding the striking surface. Here this is more of a solid striking surface. So there are considerations that need to be taken into account. But what this does tell us is that if we're at a distance, yes, I can use my ridge hand strike. If we're close in, we know I'm not going to strike him in the chest. Again, the physiology comes into play. And this gives us insight into why a strike to the throat with the edge of your arm can be incredibly devastating. Still, just as effective as striking with the 
edge of your hand. Okay, so back to our original sort of question, our original conflict then. We told you you want to have maximum speed, but if, if you rewatch that lesson, there were two pieces, two components to that. Do you remember what they were? One, you want to bring as much mass into motion as possible. See, that's the missing piece. You want to bring as much mass into motion as possible, and you want that mass to mo be moving as fast as possible. So if we're striking with the edge of our hand, yes, we want that weapon to be going as fast as possible. If we strike a little farther in, the impact force might actually increase. We still want this to be going as fast as possible, but more than that, with regards to the mass that's at play, we're not just striking with our hand. Even when we use the edge of, a hand, of our hand, we're not just striking with the hand. The uh, mass that's behind that should be the mass not only from your whole arm, but we also have some rotational inertia. Remember what that is? If we can increase our inertia, it's going to become much more difficult for our opponent to bring our, our strikes to rest. So if we strike with our arm and we have rotation from our body, we've increased our inertia, we've increased the impact force. So uh, just to summarize again, we are bringing as much mass into motion and bringing it into motion as fast as possible. And another way you can look at this to possibly simplify it, although this end is moving with a linear velocity that's faster than this end, the whole rod is moving with the same angular velocity. And when we're looking at rotational dynamics, now essentially what we want to do is get that mass moving with the largest angular velocity as possible. So I hope that helps clear up any confusion that might exist there. And I hope it gives you a little insight into something that I observed, didn't quite understand earlier on in my training, but certainly observed uh, that striking close range is still very powerful with uh, a circular strike like this ridge hand strike. All right, that's it for this tip. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed and, and please let me know if you have any questions. Take care.